This video is going to be a very basic introduction to the concept of MS, mass spectrometry. In mass spectrometry, we place a sample of molecules into our mass spec instrument. The sample of molecules is heated up and sped up, and ultimately it is passed through a shower of free electrons. These electrons come showering down onto our sample molecule, and as the electrons shower down onto the molecule, eventually one of these showering electrons is going to collide with one of the electrons that exists within a bond inside our sample molecule. So eventually one of these shower electrons is going to come along and let's say that it collides right here with just one of the electrons in this carbon-carbon bond. When this collision happens, the electron in the bond is ejected from the molecule, along with the shower electron as well. It just literally removes um, the electron from this bond. So this causes the molecule to have one less electron than normal. In this case, we're imagining a scenario in which the electron from the carbon-carbon bond is removed from the molecule. And so what remains is just one single electron holding those two carbon atoms together. In addition to losing, or because it loses an electron, this molecule becomes a cation, again, because it's lost one of its electrons. This cation continues its journey through the rest of the mass spec instrument where it comes out the other end, it collides with a detector, and the detector um, de uh, measures or detects the mass of this cation that has made it through the instrument. So the detector in this case would be measuring a mass of 30 which corresponds to the mass of two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. That works out to be 30 grams per mole. Uh, of course, when we put a sample of molecules into a mass spec, um, we're not just putting one single molecule into the mass spec, we're putting many, many molecules into the mass spec, and each one of them has a unique experience in within the mass spec. So as it passes through the shower of electrons, we'll create another option here. Let's say we pass through the shower of electrons and this time we have the same outcome that we lose an electron from the carbon-carbon bond. So we end up with just one single electron holding those two carbon atoms together. And as you can imagine, that's a pretty weak bond that carbon-carbon bond that is made up of just one single electron is very weak. So this cation, as it continues its journey through the mass spec, it is susceptible to having this carbon-carbon half of a bond just break. And when that happens, if that carbon-carbon half bond breaks, it breaks into two portions, a radical and a carbocation or a, a, a cation two portions. So one portion, uh, 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 one carbon atom retains that unpaired electron, which creates a radical. The other portion doesn't have anything on the carbon atom at all from that original bond, and so it is a cation. These portions pass through the machine, through the rest of the journey. The detector is only capable of measuring cations, so this radical remains undetected by the instrument. It detects only this little fragment here. Detect 15, a mass of 15 in this case. The mass of the carbon atom and the three hydrogen atoms. And this portion, because it's not a carbocation, not detected. And so, of course, another option for this little molecule after it passes through the shower of electrons, it could um, have an electron collide with a carbon-hydrogen bond instead, which would result in something that looked kind of like this. And that this particular cation, of course, could make it all the way through the instrument and be detected with a mass of 30, or it could fall apart, just like the example above, because this is a very weak bond. 
And if it falls apart, um, this radical could either go to the hydrogen atom or it could go to the carbon atom here. Let's say that the radical goes to the hydrogen atom. And so we get an ethyl cation. Our cation would look like this. And that hydrogen radical, the hydrogen radical would not be detected because it doesn't have a charge. Again, mass spec can only detect the positively charged fragments. So in this situation, the detector, which I have a very hard time spelling detector, this, this situation, the detector would pick up a mass of 29, a mass of 29 that corresponds to two carbon atoms and five hydrogen atoms. So as we put a sample of molecules into a mass spec, in this case, um, we've looked at three different scenarios for a single molecule. One that would result in a fragment being detected at 30, one that would be resulting in a detection with a mass of 15, and another that would result in detecting a mass of 29. So any one molecule passes through a mass spec, and on the other end, we get multiple different options for the types of mass that would be detected. Our job as chemists is to take all of these different masses that are being detected by our mass spec and use that information collectively to come up with one common molecule that could provide all of these different sized fragments.